So I woke up this morning and I saw a clip that said it was another shooting in Buckhead. It broke my heart, bro. It broke my heart because I remember when Buckhead used to be the safest place in Atlanta. The safest place to party in Atlanta. I used to go party with them white folks in Buckhead. I'm going to be real with you. You ain't really have fun at a party until you go party with some white people. They get drunk and try to dance. And I stress the word trying because the music will be going this way and they'll be going that way. But they having fun and that that's all that matters. That's all that counts. My first time going to Bucket was to go to Moondogs. Not Bulldogs. Moondogs. Now, Bulldogs is the gay club that's way up the street. Moondogs. It's like a building with, I think it got five or six bars in there. And each bar has a different type of feel and a different atmosphere to it. And you could just walk around. Then it has some pool tables. And, you know, it, it was it was a fun spot. It used to be a whole bunch of white folks, sprinkle of black people, usually like the video game nerds, you know what I'm saying? The black folks that that, <laughs> that take anime a little too serious. And it was cool. Then if you wanted to get a little more urban, you went downstairs and right next to that was Hole in the Wall. Now, I'm not going to lie, Hole in the Wall was my spot. When I was in college, Hole in the Wall was my spot. I don't particularly like going to like hood clubs. I've been to a few. I've been to the Palace. I've been to the Atrium. I've been to some joint when I lived in Griffin called Red the Red Door. Um, I've been to a lot, bro. I've been to a, a lot of like hood clubs, and those be fun too. But to be real with you, they were never as fun as going to Buckhead. Now I'm gonna tell you why. In those hood clubs. Everybody was trying to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Everybody came in trying to look cool. You had dudes that was trying to look tough. You know, the women just came to look good, I guess, and not really talk or whatever. It, it just was a different vibe. But when you went to them club, to them bars over there, especially you went to Hole in the Wall, granted it was on a smaller scale. It was fun. It was inviting, you know what I'm saying? That sounded... Sounds soft saying that, but it was inviting, bro. You had a little Asian dude that was DJing. You know what I'm saying? They'll play they'll play some Katy Perry. Yeah, I listen to Katy Perry. You feel me? Then they'll they'll throw in some uh some boosie. Then then they'll throw in like whatever new hip hop is popping. They, they, they'll, you know what I'm saying? It, it was cool. Then I remember when they bought this spot called Red Martini. Now Red Martini was more to the urban club, but you had a, it had a dress code, so they was inviting a certain type of person. You feel me? It was a lounge, like grown and sexy lounge type of situation. That was cool, but as the years progressed, the hood started finding about that little spot. Now, if hole in the wall was you know wasn't too much your flavor, and you felt turning up a little bit more. You walked around the corner, and then you went down Roswell Road. So you walk down Peachtree. You get out. You bust a left on, on Peachtree. You walk down a little bit. Then you, you go behind the Bank of America, and you start going up Roswell Road. Now, when you do that, that's where the Buckhead Bars be at. Now, I'm going to be real with you, bro. That joint was like the Vegas Strip. I don't know how many bars is out there, but it's, it's a long block full of bars on each side. Then you could turn left and it's bars on each side and stuff like that. It, bro, it used to be mad people out there. The most eventful thing that might happen out there is somebody would drink too much and pass out and the ambulance would have to come get them. That used to be the most eventful stuff that had happened out there. I used to park my car literally like 10 minutes away to walk up. And without a care in the world, bro. I remember I left my car there for like two days. I left my car there for two days. This is when I had my Mustang. Came back and it, it was embooted. The windows wasn't broken into. My junk was just sitting peacefully. But 
then the hood started finding out about the spots. The hood started finding out about the spots. If you look at my intro, at a certain part of my intro, there's a fight. This fight happened right in front of a hole in the wall. This was the this was the first fight I've seen happen over there in like the nine years I've been going there. You feel me? I saw as hole in the wall started turning into more of an urban club. And the line started, you know, the line started wrapping around the club, bro. Security became more more serious. Like security wasn't that serious before. Security became more serious. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like it. This one I know things was gonna go crazy, right? And this one I knew it was like this one I knew holding the wall was not it for me. If I was like bored, I would just go out there, I'd get something to drink, and it had like a a little stage that you can go on. I used to go on the stage and I'll chill. I drink my my Long Island nice tea, just watch people dance and stuff like that, and you know, I'll leave. Like I'll literally drive up there, go get something to drink, chill for a little bit, then I'll leave. I should do that a lot. Like Friday, Saturday, I'll, I'll just do that or whatever. I think it was last year. I found myself trying to do that. And like, bro, it was no white people. It was nothing but hood niggas outside. Like, this was my first time just seeing nothing but hood niggas on the line to get in the hole in the wall. And then when I got up in there, the stage, which used to be the spot, had a, a velvet rope around it. Like, you had to pay VIP. You had to pay money or buy a bottle or whatever it was. To get there. Like that was VIP section. After I seen that, I was like, yeah, I'm Gucci. I'm good. I'm not. I'm good. I'm 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 good. You feel what I'm saying? Cause that's what I used to try to get away from. That that's what Buckhead was. It was a a chance to party away away from the hood, bro. Cause you know, all the popping ass clubs out here, hood shit always happened. But you go to Buck, you you went out there. To the Buckhead bars, you go to Bucket Saloon, you go to um to Hole in the Wall. You could chill. Now folks is getting shot, folks is getting robbed. This is like the the fourth time in like two months or three months that somebody got shot over there. Come on, man. Y'all gotta do better, bro. Y'all messing up all the spots out here, man. I gotta do better, bro. That's not cool. I remember when we used to, I used to complain because I used to bring my friends and we go to these bars and they used to turn us away. And they used to turn us away for the stupidest reason. Oh, yeah. Um, you had boots. Oh, yeah. His, uh, his pants. You know, he has sweats. Oh, um, he has all black on. We're not, we're not accepting people. I'm like, what? What? Are you racially profiling? To be real, to be real, as somebody who, who owns, like, property, and, you know, as, as a grown man who understands the value of upkeeping your community, I look back at that and I say, I understand now. 